We welcome you to Old Spice College Across on ESPN. Coming to you today from Ann Arbor, Michigan, for the final game of the regular season with the Maryland Terrapins and the Michigan Wolverines here in this Big Ten Conference matchup. Here's what's at stake here today. Maryland trying to go to 6-0 and and undefeated in conference play. If they do, they'd win their sixth outright Big Ten title in the last seven seasons. For the Michigan Wolverines, it's huge. They've got a win today to secure a number four spot. Only the top four teams make it to the upcoming Big Ten Conference Tournament. If they lose today, based on tiebreakers, they are out. We welcome you, everyone, to Michigan. Thanks for being with us today. Mike Corey, alongside five-time national champion and All-American from Maryland, Courtney Martinez-Connor. How about the Terrapins this season? 14-1, and one, doing it in large part thanks to Aurora Cordingly. Aurora accordingly. She's done a great job. She is a transfer from Johns Hopkins. Maryland has filled in the gaps with transfers from the transfer portal, but Aurora accordingly, the offense runs through her. Very difficult to do, stepping into an already dominant program, but she does a great job of getting everyone involved, not just scoring goals herself. If you look at the reverse side of the field today, we have Caitlin Mead for Michigan. She is a true two-way midfielder. She does the job at both ends of the field. She's athletic she uses her speed her quickness but it's her ability in transition that's most notable and how about our goalkeepers here today Ariel Wiseman for Michigan third in the nation giving up just over eight goals a game outstanding save percentage as well which is also third in the country at 52 percent and on the other side from Maryland you've got the top goalkeeper in the country just seven and a half goals a game given up and the save percentage also leads the NCAA. How about this matchup between these two here today, right? It's not often when you find two goalkeepers who are having 10 plus saves each and every game. The two of them really lead their defense. However, two very different styles in the goal cage. There's Haley Mead for Michigan. We take the opening draw up against Shailen Ahern for Maryland. And about ready to get underway here today from UM Lacrosse Stadium. One loss on the season for Maryland. That's it. That was to James Madison back at home on March 26th. And looking through some of the numbers this year, Courtney, I mean, they have basically dominated most every opponent. There was only two games this year where Virginia way back in February 18th where they were down 9-6 at the half. And then Ohio State back on April 17th where they were tied 8-8 at the half. Other than that, They've kind of played from ahead this entire season. You know, after that loss versus James Madison, they really pulled things together. And sometimes, you know, as a coach, you would rather happen early in the season as opposed to the latter part when things really matter. Michigan wins the opening draw here. Caitlin Meir, they work it behind the net. And how big is this for the Wolverines here today? They gotta have this one to get into the upcoming Big Ten tournament. A lot certainly rides on this game. But winning the draw control, that's first and foremost. Hannah Nielsen, coach of Michigan, talked a lot about translating winning the draw into scoring offensively. Previously, they've won a lot of draws, but they haven't been able to put the ball into the back of the net. So that's a huge focus for her, win the ball, and then make sure that they're capitalizing on each and every possession. Gonna keep a track on that here today and see if they do. Garvey gets it in front here on the shot, that time from Jill Smith, and the save by Sterling for Maryland. Emily Sterling in cage for Maryland. She does such a great job of being active in and around the goal cage. She's not large in stature. However, she plays big within the pipes. Overall, Maryland goalkeepers overall this season, including Sterling, as we said at the top, but Emily Lamb partner has played a little bit. Maddie McSally, of course, when Maryland's had sizable leads at the end of ball games, but overall, the entire goalkeeping group, first in the country, saving at 55% in the season. Shannon Smith now for Maryland as they have it on the offensive set for the first time. Nice move here. This is by Hannah Lubecker. And Libby May. Maryland does such a great job, not just looking at their 1v1 matchups, but moving the ball quickly. That's oftentimes how they get advantages on the offensive end of the field, this one resulting in an eight meter. Libby May. Knocked out of her stick, trying to get it back for the Terps here, and she does. It's 
Clevenger, number six. Now over to Victoria Henshear for the Terps. Two minutes gone by first quarter. Shot clock inside 10. A feed in front. Nice catch and shot for the score is Eloise Clevenger. She scores it. Maryland's on the board first. Maryland super patient offensively in that possession. The clock was winding down. We see right there on the top of your screen, Shea Hearn, number 24 in black for Maryland. She's looking to dodge, but her eyes are always up. We see right there, she's carrying the ball across the 12. She's looking for her teammates streaking across the middle of the eight. They do a great job offensively at Maryland cutting. That's something that they've been working a lot on. You want to change the point of attack, get your defensive players with their heads on a swivel, and take an advantage once you see your teammate wide open. A lot of talk of Cordingly and Lou Becker, of course, with their scoring, but and Libby May as well. Those are your top three, but you can't forget about this young lady, Clevenger, who's just a sophomore, her 21st goal of the season. Picture perfect play there, as you said, Courtney on the pass from Ahern. And it's 1-0 Maryland on the board first here, just over two minutes gone by in the first quarter. The draw control won again by Michigan, picked up by Caitlin Mead. They've won the first two. You know, again, we talk about winning the draw. Ideally, each and every possession, you want to make sure that you're finishing those shot opportunities. But with the goalkeepers who we have engaged today at both ends, making it very difficult to capitalize on what's occurring. Emily Sterling already coming out with save number one off of her first shot. You're going to feed off that in terms of confidence throughout the rest of the game. Michigan's going to have to try to break history here today. They've never beaten Maryland. They're 0-8 all time, but they've been within three goals of the Terps in each of the last two meetings. This one is to get in that top four spot for the upcoming Big Ten Conference Tournament. Jill Smith. The slide coming over from the Terps, and they get it back up top here for Caitlin Mead. Defensively, Maryland is sending a quick double when they see isolation plays set up. They know that Michigan is a good 1v1 dodging team. Here's Mir on the bouncing shot. He caught it. She scores it and ties this game at one. Caitlin Mir, number one for Michigan. Taking advantage, Maryland did not send an early double how they did for those other isolation plays. And again, Caitlin Mir capitalizing, taking that space from that defensive player, just really dodging hard to her dominant hand to that left side. With no slide coming, she has time and room and is able to take a quality shot with nobody getting on her hands and no extra slide coming from that defensive end. Hey, albeit it's super early here, right? Three and a half minutes gone by, but that's just a big goal if you're Michigan, right? Because it's so tough to come from behind on this Maryland team, which everybody seems like they've been up against it against the Terps this season. They got to play step for step with them here today if they want to have a chance. To match back and forth. Yeah. You don't want Maryland to go on a run because they can certainly go on a five goal run if you allow them. So to match one goal for one goal is incredibly important, especially for such a young team. So to what you just mentioned a few moments ago, Courtney, they've won now all three draw controls, but they did score on the last one. So we'll see what happens on this sequence here. If they do, they'd be two for three, and that's to your point. It doesn't mean any good to be up in the draw controls if you don't capitalize on the offensive end. Right, and this is a team who's been plagued by injuries throughout the season. Again, a lot of younger players on the field. It bodes well for the future, but Coach Hannah Nielsen from Michigan said, you know, it's not just the future, but they've been gaining confidence. And if they can come up with a big win here, it shows that everything they've battled throughout the season has come to fruition and they're capitalizing and learning each and every game, which is what you want as a coach. Kaylee Thompson works in front. She shoots and it's wide to the right. And we've got a whistle. It's going to go against Michigan. We've got a yellow card coming out as well. So a dangerous follow through right there for Michigan shooter. You cannot shoot through a defensive player. Kaylee Thompson, number 42, with the yellow card for Michigan. As we see right here, her challenging from around the backside of the goal cage, 
We see that the defensive player is in front of her and that follow through right there, hitting her defensive player in the head. That's why she received a yellow. All of the rules for women's across are about safety, how to keep the players safe on the field. Referees have a close eye on that. And that was a great call by the referees. Kaylee Thompson, a huge part of this Michigan team. She's stepped up a lot this season, She's had two plus goals in 11 of their 15 games. Now out for two minutes, so Maryland for their first extra player opportunity here today. As we're coming up on five minutes gone by here in the first. Something we've been saying about yellow cards, they are releasable, but teams have been taking their time. Why not wait, let the opposing team lay down for as long as possible. Oh, as soon as I say that, they proved me wrong. And it's scored by Libby May for Maryland, two to one. Typically teams waiting till about that 30 second mark, but Maryland wasting no time offensively. They are able to put up major numbers. And right now this yellow card is going to be releasable, but we see the ball starting with Eloise Clevenger behind the goal cage. She's very dominant, circling the cage. Her eyes are up and she's quite a good feeder. Libby May, who had a great game versus Northwestern. Actually, uh, she had a day, seven goals, one assist, adding to her tally yet again today with goal number two for Maryland. How about the connection you have with Kathy Reese? Uh, played with her and then, you know, you look at her numbers overall now, 12 times a national champion as a player, an assistant, and now as a head coach. I mean, what she's done resurrecting Maryland has been such a great job. She, again, was an assistant, left, had some time at Denver, and then came back and really resurrected the program in terms of bringing them back to national championship caliber. Exactly what she had as a player and as an assistant coach. And she's now the, the winningest coach. She's now passed her former coach to have the most wins in Maryland history. Pretty special. Eight years in the ACC and now eight in the Big Ten. And I know, of course, Maryland's on the road here today, but a stat that's worth noting, which is pretty phenomenal. She's never lost a home conference game in the 16 years that she's coached in the combination of the ACC and the Big Ten. How impressive is that? Uh, that's incredibly impressive. You know, Maryland takes pride in their field, obviously. They play on the same surface as field hockey. So it's a little bit of an advantage for them. They're a very fast team. It's a small, more intimate setting, and they enjoy it. You know, they're going to have their entire complex redone, except for the field, because they do such a great job of playing on that smaller type setting and that fast turf, as they call it. A fast team who's even faster. Right. Don't need any more advantages. How about here in Michigan, though? I love this complex. First time been here uh, at the UM Lacrosse Stadium. Outstanding venue. As May try to get it down to Clevenger, and it's taken away, and the goalkeeper Wiseman has it for Michigan. Michigan's field, their stadium, their commitment to men's and women's lacrosse. Obviously, when they began the program. Uh, less than 10 years ago on both the men's and women's side. It, it was about showing we are committed to this sport and to have an entire complex that is just for lacrosse, I think speaks volumes in terms of especially being in the Big Ten Conference. And that's the thing. First varsity was in 2014, so just eight seasons, one NCAA tournament appearance. And you know Hannah Nielsen is trying to just kind of build this program. That's what she's doing here in her fifth season. Former four-time national champion and two-time Tawartan Trophy Award winner herself when she played at Northwestern. Four national championships. I mean, she was a dominant player, and I say was, but still is. She is going to be playing in the World Championships this summer for Australia. She's been playing for their U19 team, their senior team, for too many years. As she said, her role has changed, but she is still just as dominant. Maryland has a possession. Lou Becker. Works it up top, Libby May. Now back for Lou Becker. Shooting space. Defensively, if you are more than a stick length away, that shooting space call is going to happen each and every time. Again, the attacker cannot shoot through you. Why the referees make that call? An eight meter awarded to Maryland. This is their second one of the game. 
Looks like a false start is being called on the defensive end. So you're going to see two players go behind the ball. So Grace Griffin here, with the opportunity from Maryland. Dumps it behind the net. Now they work it over for accordingly. We talked about it in the open, Aurora accordingly. 54 goals, 38 assists. Does everything well this season for Maryland. The transfer to Hopkins. Trying to get in front. Reese. Aurora accordingly. She stepped on that goal circle line, but you saw how shifty she was. If she would have had just a, another maybe little inch back, she was splitting those defensive players behind the goal cage. She is so incredibly crafty, and that's the best part of her game around the crease. Ball knocked down. Michigan able to come back up with it here with Maddie Burns. And it's Galzerano now who has it for Michigan and back into the stick of Caitlin Meir. Michigan slowing things down, which is incredibly smart. You don't want to tire out your midfielders. The ball has been going back and forth a few times. The last few possessions, they've turned it over offensively. So they want to make sure they're utilizing as much of this shot clock as they can. Here's Aaron Garvey who has it. Feeds it in front. Nice pass. The collection on the shot by Jill Smith. And over the cage it goes. We got another card here, looks like, coming out. Same uh, situation again, right, on the dangerous shot? Same situation, another yellow card. This one for Caitlin Mead of Michigan. As we watch the replay right now, we see the feed going inside. A great feed by Aaron Garvey. However, that shot, the follow through right onto the defensive player's head. The referees are keeping a close eye, you know. They want to make sure that they are making a statement as soon as the game begins, what they are not allowing to happen and shooting through defenders, obviously one of them. You played, you coach, help us out here. How do you avoid that as you're an offensive player? What do you do? So you can't take the shot. You have to have one more pass or you shoot around. You definitely cannot go through the defensive player. Drive your arms out, wrap around. You cannot go through the defense who already is in their set position. Now, if a defender was hopping into that lane, that's a different story. We saw that occur in the quarterfinal games for the ACC tournament yesterday. But all of these Maryland defensive players, they're set, they're ready and waiting, so you can't take that shot offensively. Yeah, you got to adjust because that's two now for Michigan. As that was called on Jill Smith, she's out. Maryland trying to go up three to one here. Coming up on five minutes left in the first quarter. Pass in front, there's Cornelly, she's got it. On the feed from Libby May, and it's three to one, Maryland. Libby May continuing on her scoring ways right now. Again, the ball starting with Aurora accordingly, doing what she does best, getting everyone involved. She is the quarterback of this offense, Aurora accordingly around the crease, finishing with a nice, easy shot around the crease. Again, man up for Maryland, and the score is 3-1. College Lacrosse is brought to you by Old Spice. Smell ready for anything. Wolverines having some fun. What's your uh, best score in uh, bowling, Corny? What do you got? I mean, I don't know what the ultimate score is, but I know I can do a strike or a spare. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to finally get the players out and about, right? And we've heard all about over this last year now with COVID and the chance to kind of get that camaraderie going again outside of on the field. That's really big. Both coaches talk about lacrosse. Yes, it's great. It's fun to win, but it's more than that when you're playing on a team. To be able to do activities with them, whether it's having a meal together or going bowling together, that's how you build relationships. That's how you really set your team culture and get to know everyone. Talked about Coach Nielsen for a moment a little while ago here, and you know she still is playing, right? She said, you know, if I could play all the time, I, I probably would. And she feels like it gives her a little bit more credibility, right, with her players to say, hey, I, could st I still have it. Um, representing Australia, playing in the summer, uh, in the Worlds this summer, and you know she started. She said back in the U19, back in 2003 at Towson, and that's where they are again here this year. So, pretty am amazing how it all comes back around. Full circle, completely. You know, when you're able, as she says, to, to show skills to her players, um, you know, 
to be able to say, watch, this is how you do it, as opposed to just explain it. You know, everybody's a different style learner. It's not just about hearing it, but about seeing it visually. And she takes pride in that. And just as you said, it does give you a little bit more credibility. It's like credibility. It's like, wow, my coach, she can still do right. this. Coming up tomorrow, we were talking about the ACC's here, Notre Dame and North Carolina. This is the semis, and then Virginia and Boston College. So the top two seeds in it here, then the uh, winners move on to the highest remaining seed the following week. Big games that occurred yesterday in the quarterfinals. Notre Dame beating Duke, and then Virginia beating Syracuse. So both teams beating top 10 programs. It, it was big for them. They needed those wins in order to have over a 50% a win percentage and, and quite honestly be eligible for the NCAAs. Of course, if North Carolina wins it, they will host. They win their game if they don't and BC wins, they will host. So that's the number one and number two seed respectively. BC's only losses to North Carolina and to Duke, each by a goal. I mean, they're right there yet again trying to repeat as champions. But when you look at programs like Virginia or Notre Dame, you know, they're fighting for their life and they did a great job. I think they've done enough to earn that at-large bid in the NCAA tournament, but they're rolling with it. So they have a lot of excitement within their team right now to come up with the wins that they just did. So I wouldn't be surprised if we have some really tough games come semis. Well, and stay tuned, coming up at the half, we will reveal the committee's top 10, which they have right now up to this point before we get closing out all the conference tournament games as well. So here's a little bit of this uh, comparison with Notre Dame and Virginia. Those RPIs versus top 20 teams, huge for them. End of the season, they always want to see the committee. What are you doing for me lately? Who are you stepping up? Who are you beating? And those two big wins over top 10 programs, very, very important for both of those teams. Annabelle Burke shoots, and that's off the side of the net this time. And it's scooped up here by Emily Sterling from Maryland. Still a 3-1 to one Terps advantage. Under three minutes to go now in this first quarter from UM Lacrosse Stadium. Here in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Sun trying to break through a little bit here today on a graduation weekend, by the way. Tough to find a hotel this weekend here. <laughs> Big weekend. A lot of fans, a lot of people, restaurants packed. You know, obviously this is a, a big game for Michigan, senior day, a lot of fun, but it's a big time at Michigan right now. Fans everywhere all over campus. Good defensive play, Abby Bosco goes down, no call. Here comes Maddie Burns, gets it up to Caitlin Meir. Meir still with it for Michigan, knocked out of her stick. And Maryland comes up with it with Shannon Smith. Maryland, one of the fastest teams in all of women's across. We see that numbers potentially happening for Michigan, but the way that Maryland is able to track back and get in defensively and essentially cause that turnover, which is what it was, a trail check from behind. You know, once you think that you have them beat, they just keep running. Tremendous athletes able to come up with a big play to gain possession again. Yeah, they don't give opponents a lot of opportunities because they're number one in the country in keeping turnovers down, averaging just over 10 a ball game. And then like you just said, once they did, then they got it right back. And now in front off the top of the cage, that was by Cordingly, and here comes Michigan. Annabelle Burke has it. Got to catch a couple of breaks here today too if they want to pull off this upset. That was a great ground ball inside of their defensive area. Anytime you're able to come up with the ball, making sure to not give another offensive possession to the attack. Kudos to the defense. You know, Coach Hannah Nielsen talks a lot about their defense, sparking their offense. They've done it best by coming up with plays like that throughout the season. And she just wants to see it translate offensively now. Timeout on the field with a minute and 11 to go in this first quarter. Maryland three and Michigan one. We'll tell you about the Stanley Cup playoffs beginning Monday night on ESPN and the app. Let's get it started with the Bruins and the Hurricanes. That's 7 Eastern, followed by the Wild hosting the Blues. Every year, one of the most exciting tournaments, Stanley Cup playoffs beginning Monday night on ESPN and the app. The road to the Cup is on. What's at stake here today? Maryland trying to win their sixth outright Big Ten regular season championship in the last seven years. If they get the win, it'd be 6-0 and undefeated. Michigan 
trying to even their mark in conference play at three and three, and that would put them in the number four spot, and only the top four in the Big Ten move on to the conference tournament. So that's what's on the line for them here today. Crucial, crucial game here on this final game of the regular season and senior day as well for the Wolverines. You know, when it's a senior day, you have a lot of excitement that's happening on the field, and sometimes you just need to calm down. And so I wouldn't be surprised if coming out of this timeout that there is some confidence coming from the Michigan sideline as well as on the field saying we need to take control of this game right now. And they're also doing that ceremony after the game. I'm seeing more teams now over the years try to do that, right? I mean, I don't know when you remember it. I mean, it must be so emotional. It's got to be no matter what, but especially if you do that before the game and your parents and the family and all that, what do you think? A lot of times it is. It's more reactionary before the game. So most of what we're seeing this season, it's being done after the game, especially if there's a lot of seniors. But then the emotions are happening post game. So it's not affecting you as much on the field. All right, what do you got here on the offensive end for Michigan? What do you want to see happen here as Caitlin Mead has it? You know, I think they're getting good looks at Cage. They just have to be better with their shot selections. Either not take a shot when a defensive player is in good positioning or move the ball one extra time because they have time on the clock. It's just a matter of finding that opening as opposed to trying to force it through. Four shots on goal for Maryland. Just three so far here from Michigan in this first quarter. We're winding down, 40 seconds left in the stick of Caitlin Mead. Well, the differential shot clock at the game clock about seven seconds. So 20 seconds on the shot clock, 28 to go in this first quarter. Wolverines have to put something on net here. A feed in front, they try to get it over to Ava Class. From, from behind, from Thompson, scooped back up by Burke. Seven left to shoot. Mir has it. In front, again looking for the cut from Ava Class. to be a shot clock violation. Maryland defense all over those feeds inside. They're matching cutters well, making it very difficult for Mission to get any shots off. That goal is not going to be counted again. We heard the horn blow prior to Hannah Lubecker's shot on Cage. However, new in, in rules a few years ago, if it's a simultaneous, the goal counts. That was close. It could have been 4-1. to one. Instead, it's 3-1 thanks to the last two from Libby May and Aurora Corningly. And it's the Terps with a two-goal lead to the second after this. You're watching the Big Ten on ESPN. We're in Ann Arbor today. Final game of the regular season. Wolverines and the Terrapins. It is 3-1 Maryland as we get set for the start of the second quarter of action. Coming up tomorrow night, Sunday night baseball. Don't miss it, Phillies and Mets finish up their three game series at City Field. How about it last night? The Mets combined with five pitchers to throw a no hitter and 159 pitches. The most pitches ever in a no hitter thrown. That's amazing. Only the second in Mets history, Johan Santana back in 2012. As we get ready for Sunday night baseball, Phillies and Mets tomorrow night at seven o'clock Eastern. All starts at six with baseball tonight Sunday night countdown. All right, first quarter assessment here. Let's start with Michigan, down by two. They won four of the five draw controls. They scored on one of those four. What else do you see? You know, I just think that they need to settle the ball offensively and really take advantage of these possessions because they are winning against Maryland, and Maryland is a good draw control team. So the fact that they are winning that battle four to one, they just need to let it translate offensively. I think taking their time, making sure to let the ball do the work. They're looking for the feeds inside. They need to go to their bread and butter, which is 1v1s. Make Maryland have to send the double against them. That's how they were successful the last time. Ahern able to win the draw control here for Maryland to start this second quarter. Uh, what about the Terps here with a two goal advantage so far up to this point? You know, I think they're doing a great job of the zone defense that Michigan is playing. They're letting the ball move. And when you move the ball, it makes it tougher for the defense to transition around. They're having cutters move through, and they're attacking where those spaces are left open within the zone. So I think just continuing things along. Well, they have done it. All three goals have been assisted. Clevenger, May, and then Cordingly. 
And the assists were by Ahern, Clevenger, and May. So they've all kind of interchanged a little bit, and that's exactly what this team has done all season long. You know, when we talked with Coach Reese, she said, you know, they're good at 1v1s, they're good at cutting, but it's whatever the, the defense is doing is what they're going to capitalize on. And right now, it's making sure that they move the ball well. And Maryland is showing why they're a dominant team, why they're number three in the nation at this point. Jordan Lipkin here has it for Maryland as she works behind the net. Shot clock is down to 15 seconds. May cutting through, can't find her, and set up top for Shannon Smith. Tennis shoot. Nowhere to go for her. Five left, accordingly. Three in the clock, good defense by Michigan. Accordingly at the end, oh, and she bounces it through. Before the shot clock expires, Aurora accordingly. It is four to one, Maryland. Now, let's see. Are they gonna... She got it off in time, I believe. You know, we have a delayed, a delayed uh, clock up here. So I, I think the timing's a little bit different on the field. They didn't hesitate to make that call. Obviously, we're a little bit farther away from mm -hmm. where they can hear it on the field, but it looks like no question, Aurora accordingly. She was so calm and collected. I talked about her ability to maneuver around the crease, mix up that defensive player, get her tied up behind the goal cage. She does such a great job of that. She is super shifty, very crafty behind the goal cage. And the clock was winding down, and she was still calm, cool, and collected. That's a tough one to take if you're Michigan. You play outstanding defense for a good 89 and a half seconds, essentially, and accordingly, so look at some of her numbers, pretty unbelievable. And here's a player who is from Ontario, right? Transferred to Johns Hopkins, as you said, really didn't play field lacrosse until high school. I mean, mostly box lacrosse. She played a little bit of hockey too. Her dad, Troy, coached the NLL Buffalo Bandits. And he's now a, a GM with that organization as well. So, and going to the Hill Academy, which we know is such an unbelievable program up there in Canada. And mostly all boys, right? But. Uh, she played women's across and also uh, golf there as well. You know, she's such a spunky player. You know, I, I've known Aurora for quite a while now. She does a great job of wanting to spread her knowledge of the game. She coaches younger players. She's going to be playing as well this summer in the World Championships, and I think going to be a huge part of Team Canada's offense. You know, she was a good player at Johns Hopkins, but she's really come into her own at Maryland, whether it's because the entire complement of players that she has, you know, has given her the freedom, as she said, to, to do things that she maybe wouldn't have taken risks in doing while she had her time at Hopkins. Feet in front, the shot that time from Eloise Clevenger. It's backed up by the Terps, almost two quick ones here back to back. Cordingly has scored the last two from Maryland as they lead it. Four to one here. Over to Smith. Checked by Caitlin Mead of Michigan. Now it's Victoria Hench for May. Shooting space. We see as the ball moves, it spreads out the field defensively, and they're actually able to see that Michigan was in a, a three-second oh, three call. Excuse me, yes. The farther you spread the field, the more obvious that is that they're not within a stick length of their attacker. So it's May here, starts it up, and she shoots and scores. As she hits the turf as Libby May puts it in on the free position goal here for Maryland, five to one. Just over three minutes gone by in the second. Libby May from Maryland, again, we talked about her having a great game versus Northwestern, but she is an incredible shooter. Coach Reese said she really capitalizes when she has a shot on cage. Inside, she's not just a great shooter, but a great cutter as well, but her takeoff from that eight meter free position was incredibly fast. Those Michigan players crashed in on her quickly. So all she did was drop that stick low, making sure that she was shooting around the sticks of those defensive players. This last three minutes and 10 seconds, if you will, dating back to the end of the first quarter, it's been tough if you're Michigan, right? They almost gave up a goal to Lubecker, who scored, but it was right after the clock expired at the end of the first. 
Then you start the second quarter and accordingly scores literally with a half a second left on the shot clock, if that. And then you get a foul and May scores in the free position. So a few things going on here if you're Michigan. You just can't have it if you want to try to win this ball game today. You know, you have to, to stop the run. The lacrosse is a game of runs, but you don't want them to be very large right now. And Maryland has scored the last four goals. So at this point, you need to make sure that you are coming up with the draw control, as Michigan just did, but taking your time offensively, really making sure that you are finishing this possession with a goal. Kaylee Thompson has it behind the net, finds Mir. This is a huge possession for them. You're right, as Maryland has scored the last two at the end of the first quarter, they've scored the first two to start this second quarter. Burke, cross field for Ava Class. Thompson looking for the cutter. Back up top, Class loses it. Maryland's got it, whistle on Michigan, and a card's coming out. Cross check. So Maryland defense, you know, they're playing tough, they're physical. However, offensively, we're just seeing the ball not move as quickly for Michigan, and they're not clearing enough space. They're very good, again, at those 1v1 dodges. They have some good cutting options or some two-man plays. But unfortunate, the ball just popped right out of number 20, Ava Class's stick, went right to Maryland's defense. You're thinking, what else can we do? The ball's just rolling right to them, but tightening things up on the offensive end of the field. I think as soon as that happens, Michigan's going to find success once they just relax a little bit. Again, there can be as many as five to seven freshmen on the field at any one time. And I'll tell you what, there's not as many underclassmen on Maryland's field. And that's tough. That's tough when you have a lot of confidence or just experience that you're up against. Yeah, Coach Nielsen was talking to us about that this week. And it's helpful, I guess, in the recruiting process a little bit where you could say, yeah, you come here, you're going to probably play right away if you're, <laughs> if you're good enough and you're able to get on the field and help us out. And that's kind of what's happened. But in the same sense, like you just said, going up against a veteran team, not good. And here it is again. And Maryland scores Clevenger, the recipient of the pass in front, wide open. Her second goal today to go along with an assist as well. It's on the player advantage, and it's 6-1 Terps. Eloise Clevenger, we see her with the ball behind the goal cage. Swing it around one more to Libby May and back. A nice little give and go. Very underrated. To give the ball to a teammate, cut right after you pass the ball. It just can mix up the defense. Defense is generally looking at where that ball is passed to, and then that's when you capitalize asking for the ball right back. So very simple offense. But again, very underutilized right there, Libby May and Eloise Clevenger. What did you say earlier about trying not to let Maryland go on a five goal run? <laughs> That's what we got right here as it's 6 1 Terps. Maryland 5 0. Big Ten Conference play, defeating each opponent by at least six goals this season. Trying to win their sixth outright Big Ten Conference title in the last seven years. Michigan needs this to become the four seed, because only the top four in the conference make the upcoming Big Ten Conference tournament. But they're down by five here early as we played five minutes into the second quarter. You know, when you have such a dominant conference, obviously very different than what we're seeing in the ACC. ACC, everyone was in. You know, this makes it a bit tougher when you have your regular season. Each and every game counts. It's super stressful. And right now, you know, you're fighting for your life to be able to stay and remain within playing your season. Otherwise, after this game, you could be done. That's a lot of pressure. Right. Lou Becker. And a Lou Becker trying to do it all there and it gets shut off, feeds it. And that's a whistle, is up in the head and neck area there with that hit. Comes another free position for Maryland as if they needed any more help right now at this point. 
Shannon Smith, we see right there the stick slide up. Referees call that a foul immediately. Great call on the field. Another transfer. Shannon Smith, number 32 for Maryland. She came from UNC. I mean, they just did a really great job of plugging in players for holes that they needed to fill on the field. And each and every one of those players just about stepped in and is able to contribute in their respective positions. And it's worked out pretty well for him here, to say the least. Now, accordingly, who's going to have the free position for Maryland. Already with two goals here today. Started early. So we saw it go against the defense previously for Michigan. Referees have their eyes on everything. Aurora accordingly took a half a second too soon. And the referees are prepared, ready to make those phone calls. Our phone calls make those calls on the field. Accordingly, oh, what a save made by Ariel Wiseman. Needed that. That was big time on the doorstep. And that's something that can give you confidence on the field. So a little back and forth. Michigan turned the ball over in transition. But coming up with a big time save like that, a one on one, or zero defensive players out there. And we look on our screen right here. Roar accordingly, top goal scorer for Maryland. And that nice kick save, a big step defensively coming out of the goal cage, Ariel Wiseman. You know, she's not a big goalkeeper, small in stature, but she is super physical, come, comes out nice and strong. She usually has a small arc, but in a 1v9 situation, she was making sure to step out and cut away any and all angles for that attacker coming in strong. Graduate students had multiple 10 plus save games this season. You said a very unique style, but she's been getting it done here in her fifth season. We'll see if they can translate that into a goal. Broken stick. Look at that. Mm. Michigan wants to get something going here. Five nothing shots for Maryland this quarter, as you see, as we're halfway through the second. We look right here, that contact. <laughs> Immediately, number 24 for Maryland, Shaylin Ahern. Wanted it known that her stick was broken. You can't play when your stick breaks, but it's not necessarily that she made too hard of contact. When it's really cold or really hot, the sticks are more likely to break. And, you know, it's a bit chilly out there today. It is a little bit. We got the windows closed up here for you. All, all, <laughs> all good. Sterling on the save, though, too, for Maryland on the other end. Now let's see if the Terps can take advantage as Jordan Lipkin has it. Gets it over for Shannon Smith. This is Hench, comes off the pick set from Lubecker. Back up for May. Libby May. Knocked out of her stick, good play. It's Morgan Whitaker that time. On her team leading 16th cause turnover of the season. You know, not often do you see the ball get taken away from any of the Maryland players with the check, but that was a very heads up defensive play. She was sitting low, she was athletic, and she did a nice little push-pull on her check. She missed the stick, no big deal. She was in a good position to continue playing defense. That was picture perfect by Michigan. And now, again, having another opportunity offensively, and they really need this one. Yes, they do. Julia Schwab here, 31, controls it, gets it for Jill Smith. Now over for Burke, Annabelle Burke. Schwab behind the net for Thompson. Checked by Brianna Lamoureux. Mir. Just trying to spin through defenders and a little sidewinder that goes over the top of the net. It's backed up by Kaylee Thompson. Shot clock is not reset. 25 seconds, still plenty of time. Thompson. Just hard to get a shot off. In front, and they'll get it this time. Scored for Claire Gavin. I am pretty positive last time I was talking over the goal of Michigan. Maybe that's what's good luck for them, a little broadcaster communication. But we have Claire Galvin, number 28, with a strong side cut. As soon as she saw that defensive player with her head on a swivel, that's when she cut. When you see the ponytail, it's time to head to goal. And we have 
Caitlin Meir with her head up, putting Michigan for the second time on the scoreboard. Welcome back to Old Spice College Across on ESPN here today from Ann Arbor, Michigan in this Big Ten matchup, the Terps and the Wolverines. Michigan back on the board of their second goal of the game. 5.43 to play here in the second quarter. Let's go back to uh, 2019 and Maryland Terrapins against BC for the title. Brindy Griffin right there, dominant player for Maryland and then Grace Griffin, number 22. Showing their dominance, bringing another national championship to Maryland. I, I mean, too many to count at this point. However, that was at Johns Hopkins Homewood Field. Again, the national championship in 2022 returns to Homewood Field. Maryland feeling good about their season thus far, filling gaps with some transfers from the transfer portal. Kathy Reese, again, becoming the all-time winningest coach in program history at Maryland, surpassing her former coach, Cindy Timschel. 12 titles, player, an assistant, and as a head coach, five as the head coach. Began in 2010, and then the latest one in 2019, as you just saw. That was a rematch also of the 2017 title game in which Maryland won again as well over BC. And then, of course, BC got over the hump last year, uh, winning the national title. We're set up for what should be an outstanding tournament here, too, as well this year. I mean, you got UNC undefeated, playing awesome. BC, we know, two losses by only one goal each. This Maryland team only has one loss this year, and they've been running through all their opponents. You know, I think something that hurt the Big Ten Conference last year was just playing interconference games only. So they got to see one another consistently, but obviously come NCAA tournament time in the semifinals, Northwestern struggled when they played because they had only seen Big Ten teams over and over and over again. And oftentimes, you know, you're able to shake things out when you face other opponents, namely those within the ACC. Again, it's that really fast pace that sets teams apart. And that's a good point with that as Annabelle Burke with that shot and the save from Emily Sterling from Maryland. Michigan trying to go back to back rather quickly there. Their defense has been outstanding. Both teams has all year. Got two of the best defensive teams here in this game today. And Michigan, the most goals they've allowed this season in a first half has been seven. They did that twice versus USC and Rutgers. They gave up seven to each of those two. And now they've already given up six on the board here to Maryland. We still have four and a half to play in the first half. It's just, you know, they know they can, you know, stop teams. And this is a very high powered team in Maryland, but they're going to have to put up points today and that's what's so tough when you go up against this Maryland team who's awesome defensively. Right, it's not just their attack but it's their defense as well that sets them apart. That's what they consistently have done and been in the top 10, top five, year in and year out. You know, they're very disciplined. Uh, Coach Kathy Reese gave a lot of kudos to her coaches. They've been with her for quite a long time and they do a great job of really just getting the defense ready. Free position here for Maryland. Shooting and scoring is Victoria Hatch. Maryland has been deadly off of the eight meter line each and every time capitalizing except when Aurora accordingly had that false start, the quick start. And we see right there, Victoria Hench, number two. It's that quick takeoff. They're giving their stick side a little bit more space because Michigan is doing a good job of collapsing in hard. So getting a quick start, taking off and shooting after three, four steps. Those are the big keys when taking an eight meter. That's two goals off of that. Sequence there, the eight meter with Libby May, who had the fifth goal of the game for Maryland. And now Victoria Hench off the free position as well. So it's seven to two, 404 remaining first half. Leads back up to five. Maryland has come back to win a few of the draw controls here. Let's see who gets this one. It's be Michigan, seven to four. They lead that category now, but can they score the goal? That's obviously most important. Over to Mir. And behind to Thompson. So at some point you have to make a change. You have to make sure that you're translating when you have the ball on the offensive end of the field. And again, I think once they relax, we'll see a very different style. Watching their practice the other day, they were cutting with more confidence, challenging with more confidence. And a lot of teams honor 
They're strong one-on-ones, and we're just seeing them still test the waters. Again, they are playing the number three team in the country. Things can get a little scary out there, especially when quick doubles are being sent by the defense. But you have to just play calm. You have to play within your own realm. Know that you're capable, and then make sure that you capitalize with quality shots. Nice move here, and the ball knocked out of the stick of Caitlin Knee, though, and Maryland's going to come up with it. Shailen Ahern has it for the Terps. And, you know, I, I get what you're saying, too. You know, you're there in practice, you're moving with authority, and then all of a sudden it changes once you see the speed and the athleticism from the actual opponent, and you're probably not as quite, you know, working with that same intensity. Because you don't want to turn it over either, too. You can't give them opportunities. You, know, you play a little tighter in a game, right. especially against a really tough top opponent. And that's what we're kind of seeing here a little bit. So. Once they relax, and I, I know that Coach Hannah Nielsen, she does such a great job of making in-game adjustments. But at this point, there's nothing that she can do and or say other than say, I believe in you guys. You have to do it on the field because you are capable. So it, it's not anything that we're seeing special that Maryland's doing defensively. They're just playing good, strong defense, and Michigan has to step up offensively. Another foul here on the Wolverines. Two minutes and 15 seconds to play in the second. We see Libby May right here with the ball. And those are constant little cross checks, those bumps, those pushes. That's what the referees are calling, which is awarding Maryland another eight meter. You cannot do that. You can't extend your arms and constantly bump and push. May passed it back out the start here. Now it's into the stick of Lubecker who feeds it into the middle. And no room for a shot there from Cordingley. And just kind of to your point earlier about, you know, on the dangerous follow through on shots. I mean, that's one right there, right? As you catch it right in the middle and you feel that defender is right on you and you saw Cordingly come out with it. She didn't turn, she didn't shoot, she didn't force anything. I mean, that's the, mm -hmm. the IQ that she has too. Right. It's the experience, that extra little second, but coming out, defense sparking the offense yet again. That was Caitlin Mead, number 30 for Michigan, coming up with that huge cause turnover out of the defensive end. And now we see them slowing things down. We see calls coming in from the sideline for Michigan, telling them to relax, run your play, take your time. There's 50 seconds on the shot clock. That's a lot of time to be had on the offensive end of the field. There's Meade, one minute left, 37 to shoot. First half here from Michigan, Jill Smith, little fake. Everyone does such a nice job of recovering, right? I mean, even when you have an open player for the moment, they just put a slide and recover nicely. But here's a whistle now. Another three second call this time against Maryland. So it's going to be Michigan's ball, and this is big. Maybe that's why, because they're waiting to see where it's going and weren't marking anyone enough and within the space of the offensive player so here's a free position and a chance for Meade and she scores Caitlin Meade for Michigan their third today with 45.8 seconds to play in the first half so that was a lot of patience and we saw that the offense was a bit more spread and that's what capitalized and the referees being able to see that there was three seconds against the Maryland defense, more than a stick length away, translated into an eight meter free position for them. So spreading the field certainly helped them out and allowed the referees to see that, hey, Maryland's defense is playing good, but with a little bit of help by sagging in a little too much. Yeah, really good point there. So Michigan with their third goal here, trying to stick right in this game. I mean, down by four, 45.8 seconds left. How huge would it be if they can win this draw control and try to get one back to back to end this first half? We'll see. It only takes six seconds from the draw. Right. It's doable, very doable. They've been winning it, pushing transition, just making sure to finish their shot selections with a quality shot. Ahern still at the draw control for Maryland, but it's Josie Gooch that took it that time for Michigan. And it's going to be Terps' possession. Now you can't give up another one here before the half. As Ahern works it in. 
Shot clock's off, 25 seconds left in the first half. Got a lot for you coming up at the half. We'll be talking about the upcoming tournament and all the dates and games that you can watch. Women's across here on the ESPN networks. We'll reveal the top 10 and another foul here with just 11.6 seconds to go. Uh, actually a broken stick immediately. Oh. She held her hands up just like Marilyn did. So that way the whistle was blown right away. Otherwise that could have been a huge scoring opportunity for Marilyn. That's two today. Yeah. It's, what's the weather temp right now? Right. So as we watch this right here, defense, good solid position and the stick yeah. just literally snapped in half. Not a, a really hard contact, just. One for each team here today on the Broken Sticks. Four seconds left. And what do you think about that call with 1.7 remaining? That's tough. That was a held stick inside the critical scoring area. Both players just going for the ground ball, but you cannot hold the opposing team stick. It looks like the referees are talking about it, though. There may be another call in there that we didn't see. So curious what this discussion shows. So a feed inside, missed the mark. Oh, right there. So right there, yeah, that possibly held. Possibly on, uh, on Gooch, right? Right, that held stick is what's being called, but they're pulling it out to the 12 because it was not inside the critical scoring area. Okay, so with 1.7 to go here, the shot. Uh, save made by Wiseman, they needed that. Good job by Michigan to hold strong at the end of the first frame. Boy, they had that play at the end of the first quarter from Lou Becker that scored right after the clock expired, and then they get the save here at the end of the second. Seven to four, Maryland. Trying to win their sixth outright Big Ten title in the last seven seasons. Michigan trying to get in the top four for the Big Ten Conference Tournament. They need a win here today, but there's two goals by three players from Maryland. Clevenger, May, and Cordingly, and they lead it seven to three at the half. We'll be back from halftime from Ann Arbor, Michigan, right after this. At the conclusion of this game, they're hoping it's after a huge upset win here if they can pull it off today. They're down by four, third quarter underway. Terrapins have the possession. Accordingly, and hounded by Catherine Gazzarano, a graduate defensive player for Michigan. So a foul occurred. Players are being moved to the dot behind the goal cage. Accordingly, feeds it back up top. Swung over to Shannon Smith. Trying to fight through a double team. Loses it, gets it back. Michigan was looking for a foul to be called. They thought it looked like the ball went into the hands of Shannon Smith before she was able to, to fumble it out and get it back into her stick. Good passing here from Maryland. Almost everyone's touched it here in this last sequence. Five passes accordingly. Shot clock's down to 10. Up for Libby May, who's got two goals today. Inside, Hench, three to shoot. Feeds the cutter, oh, right in front, it's Clevenger, and she scores it for Maryland again with a shot clock winding down. Huge goal, eight to three Terps. <laughs> Mike, I didn't want to jinx it, but I was about to say as that clock was at 12 seconds, Maryland does what they do best under pressure. And we saw Libby May getting a pass to the inside, Hench, Eyes are up and right around that crease yet again, right before the buzzer going off, Eloise Clevenger. So they never quit until the play is done. Again, Michigan looking a little confused, like wait, was it before or after the buzzer? I, we're a bit delayed up here. It's too hard for us to tell, but on the field, referees were not hesitating. They immediately were, were blowing that whistle that a goal was scored. Let's, let's take a look at this again to see if the shot was off, and yeah. it clearly was. She stayed out of the crease as well, too, and for a moment, I didn't know if Hench knew, you know, where she was exactly going with it, or was it, you know, going to Clevenger, but it looked right on time, and 
That's got to be something that they practice there toward the end of the clock, right? Get somebody coming in front. Third goal today. All right, and that's pressure. That's a yeah. pressure situation. It's remain calm, get it into a good scoring opportunity, and they have not had a shot clock violation yet, but three times at this point, scoring last minute. Lubecker, and she comes right down and scores for Maryland. Hannah Lubecker gets on the board for the first time today. Right off the draw control, and back to back for Maryland, 9-3. As we look at this, a big battle for the draw control. Shaylin Ahern, number 24 for Maryland, getting possession off of that foul. And then off to the races, Hannah Lubecker. She is such a great dodger, incredibly fast, super powerful. And we see that that competitive spirit culminated in her transition from the draw control, getting that ball from Shay Ahern, taking it coast to coast. What a competitor and putting goal number nine on the board for Maryland. How about Lou Becker? She's homeschooled her entire life, played on club teams, a fellowship of Christian athletes, part of her church teams back at Forest Hill, Maryland. Also played a little soccer as well. Mom Judy was her teacher, her dad Ron. She's got three siblings. And she was a top 10 recruit, you know, coming out of high school, battling along with UNC and Syracuse. and. Ends up going to Maryland, and she's just a junior. Goal, by so 40, dominant for them Richard. this season and throughout her career. The Gets the quarter. goal, puts them up nine to three, and Courtney, that was just 13 seconds in between goals there for the Terps. And at this point, you gotta really make sure that this possession is relaxed, is patient, and is getting everyone involved for the Wolverines. So it's been too much in the hands of your opponent, Maryland, at this point. And you want to make sure to have a quality shot. You want to make sure that you have a shot, ideally with the one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, making sure to catch those defensive players either again in a lane where you are able to take that shooting space call or a three second or better yet, just have a foul called inside the eight meter. Exactly, as Meir goes down, she got hit for Michigan. It's a Wolverines team that's been involved in a lot of close games this season. The four goals, the deficit at the half was their largest deficit in a half this season. Of course, going up against one of the top teams in the nation here today, free position, good opportunity for the goal. Meir saves Sterling, hard to get past the nation's top goalkeeper in terms of goals against and save percentage, and you can see why. Emily Sterling, she came into Maryland coming out of a big time injury, stepped in that first season, difficult, obviously COVID year, last year, again, different with just Big Ten opponents. And she stepped in again this year as a veteran player with two initial seasons, which were just not the norm. And she plays big, not just in big games, but as the quarterback of that entire defense, as if she's been there throughout entire seasons. It looks like another false start yeah, for, for Maryland. Maryland. Two people behind at this point. Jill Smith for Michigan. Pulls it back out up top here for Galvin. And another whistle. As Mir got it. Reposition coming up here. Caitlin Mir. Mir shoots another save, Sterling. What set up that eight meter was tremendous ball movement and vision by Michigan. They let the ball do the work, finding that open player. Again, Maryland sending quick doubles moving around, making sure your eyes are up or what's gonna be very important for Michigan. Finding that open player, that one more pass. There it is, Annabelle Burke scores from Mir. And Burke gets her 16th of the season. That's a big response for Michigan after allowing those two straight goals from Maryland in 13 seconds. 
So as the ball is being swung around quickly from one side of X to the other, we see that the defense is shifting. Once the ball is in Annabelle Burke's stick, she sees that she has space to attack. The defense for Maryland hadn't quite shifted, so as soon as she received that pass from Caitlin Muir, she made sure to dodge, and that's what you want to do. You have space, you take it to goal. She protected her stick through those sliding defenders. Very smart for Annabelle Burke, just a sophomore. Again, one of the many underclassmen who are on the field for Michigan. Very underclass heavy, I would say. Well, it's going to develop over time for sure. And then her, the job that she's done, two goals in the last game. Picks up her first of the day here today. And talked about Caitlin Meir. She's been involved in a lot so far here this afternoon. Of the four goals for Michigan, she has one of them and two assists. The last one there to Burke. Six saves for Sterling in goal for Maryland, or Michigan might be a little closer, right? They've had a couple there right on the doorstep. Yeah, and then you look at those last minute goals, you know, yep. if, if you take away those three last minute goals, all of a sudden it's four, six, just even with that right there. Well, and, and the penalties too, because you're right, Corden Lee scored for Maryland, literally with no time left on the shot clock. She just got it off in time. They got a free position goal from May, and then they also got an extra player goal from Clevenger. So you're right, all those little things add up, and that's three more goals from Maryland. Now another save from Sterling, and upset with herself that time was Garvey after the shot from Michigan, but good look at it. Uh, they're getting good looks, right? They're getting good looks. I think they're a bit more confident offensively this third quarter, which is incredibly important, but they are facing Emily Sterling in gold. She is number one in the nation in terms of goals against with 7.56. And, you know, that's tough to be stacked against her. You just have to make sure you're seeing that plain and simple. It's not about the goalie. It's about where you are putting the ball. Take that extra little second before shooting. Being much more assertive here in the second half, you go back uh, to what you were saying earlier. I mean, the second quarter, it took them about halfway through the second quarter to even get a shot off Michigan. Of course, you got to have the ball, of course, but uh, they, you know, they got to put more pressure on the Terps, and they have been so far to start the first five minutes of the second half. We had talked about adjustments being done at halftime. Obviously, quarters are a huge benefit to coaches who make in-game adjustments, and Hannah Nielsen, head coach for Michigan, one of the best at that. She is a true student of the game, always wanting to learn, get better. She's a, a big proponent of watching film, making sure she can put her team in the best possible situation. And, you know, in-game adjustments are huge for her as well as this Michigan team. I think they've started out this third quarter in a good, strong position in order to close the gap. Much better. Pass in front, trying to force it in there to Clevenger. Maryland, only five left on the clock, and a save made, a huge one by Wiseman. Michigan needed that. They don't want to give up another goal late in the shot clock, and now they get it going the other way on the clear. Ariel Wiseman standing on her head on that one. A lot of fakes being thrown by freshman Jordan Lipkin of Maryland, and she held her position. We see right here holding her position. It was almost like she baited her to shoot high by dipping down low. Very smart. Ariel Wiseman, again, plays a little bit of a different style, and Hannah Nielsen said, you know, we embrace it. It's not about making changes in players. What works for her, we're sticking with. She doesn't often turn her back when the ball is behind the goal cage, something that you don't see often in a field goalie for lacrosse, more so in box lacrosse or in ice hockey. Well, and that's how much you have to rely on your teammates and the communication, too, of what their defender, defenders are telling you. You know, if you're not looking back like that all the time, right? She's trying to see what's happening in front of her so she's not caught off guard with a quick pass and a score. And that's why she's one of the top of the country. And Michigan mounting the comeback here as Jill Smith puts it in. And it's their fifth of the day, and they're within four. Michigan translating that defensive play into the offense. Jill Smith, just a freshman. She is a true midfielder, but they bumped her to attack. They said they needed a spark on the offensive end of the field because she is a great 1v1 dodger. And we see this opportunity right here that she was put in front. She had 
an alley dodge, time and room. She was able to really wind up getting a shot on Cage. No defensive player was on her hands. And when nobody's on your hands, you are able to get a better shot off on goal. And that propelling Michigan to goal number five, we could see a big swing if they win this next draw. It's big time for the Wolverines to get those two back. Maryland scored the first two of this second half and 13 seconds apart. And then Annabelle Burke and Jill Smith have come back for two. And still a lot of time remaining here. Eight minutes and 12 seconds to play in the third. Back to the draw control here. Right now it's nine to seven in favor of Michigan today. Winning the DCs. Wolverines possession. That was a trip on the circle. One referee is looking at the draw takers. The other referees are looking at the restraining line and those players on the circle. Great call. Nothing gets by these referees on the field. Again, they made it known what is going to be allowed and what is not in terms of contact on the defensive end of the field. But all four referees, as well as the one in the box, doing an excellent job of managing the game. Yeah, well officiated here today for sure. Both ways too as well. Mir now feeds it cross field for Smith. Back to Mir, cutting through the middle. It's shut off. Good job as they reverse it behind the net for Thompson. She comes around in front. Looking, that's not there. Back to Mir. That's a good position right there. Again, showing patience. They realized the shot wasn't there. They didn't have an advantage, so try something else rather than forcing a shot through the defender, which is what we were seeing a lot of in that first quarter. Again, adjustments being made for the positive for Michigan offensively. Smith, still plenty of time to shoot. 25 seconds, Caitlin Muir. Wolverines down four, back to Smith. It's tough to win a one-on-one -on -one matchup, right? I mean, it's got the ball's got to move, like you said. Thompson. And Maryland's all over him. Here's Mir and wild shot, and that's not going to go their way as uh, Sterling was able to get back there quickly for Maryland. Nobody behind the cage. Tough way to finish up, but was uh, starting as a good offensive possession. Michigan's found success when they let the ball move quickly, and they're setting cutters or having those big isolation 1v1 dodges. And that was just a little bit stagnant, making it easy for the defense. You never want to help the defense out by not moving offensively. Shots pretty even so far here now, 15-14 in favor of Maryland. And there's six remaining in the third and coming in front and scoring is Clevenger. What a day she's had here today for Maryland. Eloise Clevenger, number six for Maryland. We've talked a lot about her being a feeder, but her ability to quietly get herself into position offensively, making herself a threat. We see that pick set off ball by Aurora accordingly. Her fourth goal of the game, Eloise Clevenger keeping Maryland on top. You're watching the Big Ten on ESPN here today from Michigan. In the final game of the regular season, the Terrapins trying to win and go 6-0 would be their sixth outright Big Ten title in the last seven years. Michigan, if they win today, they're in the top four, and only the top four make it to the upcoming Big Ten Conference Tournament. If they lose, they are out via the tiebreaker rules, so they've got to win this one here today, and it's a five-goal game right now at 10 to five in favor of the Terps. Stanley Cup playoffs begin Monday night on ESPN in the app. Bruins and the Hurricanes will get you started at seven o'clock Eastern, then at 9.30, the Wild and the Blues most exciting tournaments, the Stanley Cup playoffs beginning Monday night on ESPN. The road to the Cup is on. That popcorn looks good. Yeah, it looks really good, yeah. <laughs> we're going to find out soon of the concession stands. We were actually getting offered some stuff up here, which is great. I just, you know, uh, I'm not one of those. The crew is awesome. The crew is unbelievable today. I, not one of those things I can do is kind of my pet peeve of eating on the air. I know we've seen it a lot, you know, sometimes, you know, there's some unique things going on at different games, whatever. 
I'm not eating when I'm broadcasting. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. Look at this. Another draw control for Michigan. They are battling at the draw. It's one of the highlights that they have had throughout the season. Coming up with draw controls. And now in the third quarter, making a change where they've translated some of those into goals, which if they're going to continue to come back, they're going to need as many of those to translate into a goal as possible. Sterling on the save of the shot from Jill Smith. This is loose. They're calling this on Maryland, so Michigan gets it back. Caitlin Mead on the restart. Mead dumps it for Jane Federoff. Now for Meir. This is why we said it's so tough to come back on this Maryland team. You know, they had it down to four, but you know, they, they, you still, not bad, but I mean, every time it seems like Maryland's able to kind of keep them at bay. They've got to get a run two, three in a row here to really make this thing interesting right now. And that's tough. And it is tough to be playing against one of the top defensive teams in the nation and to step up. But right there we see quick ball movement and then good things happen. Shooting space call right there against Maryland, but that can only occur when you're moving the ball quickly and then attacking the cage again. Shane Federoff for Michigan. High over the net. And backed up there by Kaylee Thompson. Shot clock, and not reset. Thompson, she scores. What a great individual effort. They needed that from one of their best of the season. Kaylee Thompson, team leading 29th goal of the year. Kaylee Thompson, she's been a little bit quiet today. She's another one of those players who was a midfielder before, before they bumped her to attack, playing from X, and that's exactly where she dodged from. We see her taking advantage, protecting her stick through those defensive checks. She's a good 1v1 threat. So if Michigan is going to come back, they have to put the ball in the hands of those that are capable. Seniors like Kaylee Thompson, or as her team so affectionately calls her, Tommy. Yeah, Coach uh, Nielsen had a ton of great things to say about her and what she's done this season. Transfer from Elon here since her sophomore season. She had five hat tricks on the year. Two goals in the last game, big one here. As Michigan has kind of evened up the score in this third quarter, three goals for the Terps, three for the Wolverines. Still a four goal game. Four minutes and 12 seconds to play in this third quarter. You know, when you look at the score 10-6 and you're playing the number three team in the country, four goals can happen in the snap of your hand and so it just takes six seconds from a draw control the game is not all said and done we still have four minutes in this third quarter and then an entire another quarter so despite the fact that it seems like maryland has dominated through a lot of the game it's still close it's still anybody's game at this point and i'm sure that's the message coming in from coach hannah nielsen of michigan that relax Right? We're still in this, you know, there's still an opportunity to get to the Big Ten tournament. Well, from what we're, what we're watching here, and I know it's all part of the game because you can't just take something out, but that's how we like to talk, right? Oh, if we didn't throw that interception or we didn't turn the ball over or we didn't fumble, we would have won. Yeah, I know, but that's the game. And now Michigan <laughs> unable to stop the feed in front to Maryland's Shannon Smith, and she gets the goal right back. I was going to say it was that five goal run by them that really did the damage early in this game. And that's what you can't have if you're playing this team. And now Smith scores it. We see the ball is in Aurora accordingly stick again. We talk about her being the leader, the quarterback of this Maryland offense. It often goes through her. And Shannon Smith, another transfer who is streaking in the middle of that field, number 32 finishing her shot selection. She's just a sophomore. Again, this is her first season at Maryland. She's a transfer from UNC. 
and every single player who they've picked up that they were able to plug in seamlessly onto the field, and they've been tremendous in stepping in. Roy accordingly, captain. Hard to do when you step into a brand new team and be named a captain. And then Abby Bosco on the defensive end of the field, she is one of their leaders, and she's at the draw scooping up a lot of draw controls, number one. She was another transfer for Maryland. And it's amazing to be able to integrate yourself into an entirely different team and just like assimilate into a brand new culture and then succeed. They've done that really well this season as evident of the 14 and one record for this Maryland group. And they've never lost to Michigan. They've won all eight meetings. They beat Michigan three times last year, twice in College Park and one time in the Big Ten Tournament. And Hannah Lubecker, who does have the one goal today. And she had 16 goals against Michigan last year. Maryland is 2-0 all time here against the Wolverines in Ann Arbor. We look at that quick double coming from Maryland, but the ball couldn't quite move quick enough offensively for Michigan. Ball knocked down. Smith had it for the moment. She got run into and hit. It's against Maryland. It'll be Jill Smith here, 14 for Michigan. Coming up on two minutes left in this third quarter. Mir looking for the cutter at Smith and another great save from Sterling. She has done an outstanding job in gold, not just today, but throughout the entire season. And we can see why she is locked in with that ball. She tracks it so very well. And the basics, your job as a goalie is to save the ball. And she does it so very well. So good with the timing of it, too, and, and when they've occurred. I mean, nine saves today. He's going to have six goals, but nine big saves. There's a player in Sterling who gives up just an average of seven and a half a ball game. It's good for first in the nation. And we're winding down the third quarter here. And that's a foul on Michigan in the back that time of Grace Griffin from Maryland. Or check it, that was Shannon Smith. As we look at this, that ball came in a little bit late as it was fed into Shannon Smith defensively. A little too much contact, which set up that eight meter, but it was a very low angle. Smart for Maryland to kick it out, making sure not to force anything and capitalize on this possession. Yeah, exactly right. No reason to here when you're up five. Here's Courtney Lee. Flag is out. A card, excuse me, yellow card here is accordingly kind of cut right in front. Another yellow card up on Michigan. And that's going to be four today. That would be their fourth. I, I'd love to see this replay. We see the referees oh, calling they, they offsetting. Changed. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I wasn't seeing what that yellow card would have been. Um, and it looks like referees discuss things, um, offsetting fouls. And so the ball's going to Michigan. But we see this dodge right here. And that's a good check. The, the stick is trailing. Now I'm not sure what the offsetting foul was for Maryland. However, the referees know yeah. what it was on the field. And ultimately offsetting, it goes changes of possession. And this time it was for Michigan. Well, that's big, but then they turn it over here. That's the 10th turnover of the ball game for the Wolverines, and that's tough. With 30 seconds left, could have got to try to grab a little bit of extra momentum at the end of the quarter. And now Maryland's in no hurry. An 11-6 lead. Ten seconds left. Lou Becker gets free. She shoots and scores. With 6.5 seconds left in the third quarter, Hannah Lubecker with her second today. We talked about number 40, Hannah Lubecker for Maryland. 
What a great, powerful dodger that she is. And as she's dodging, we see a couple, couple hits that she's taking, she's absorbing, all while still managing to continue her dodge. Again, using her speed so incredibly fast, was able to, to put goal number 12 on the board for Maryland. And again, with the clock not having much time, and that's been a killer for Michigan so far this game, where they've allowed goals to be scored in the final seconds. 45 goals now in the season, second on the team, Lou Becker from Maryland. They go up 12-6. Maryland Six and a half seconds left in the third. They win the draw control, they throw it away. And that's gonna be the end of the third quarter of action. Maryland outscored Michigan three to one in the first, four to two in the second, and five to three in the third. Eloise Clevenger doing a great job of being sneaky in around that goal cage. Same thing, Kaylee Thompson from Michigan. We're here watching Big Ten Lacrosse. Old Spice College Lacrosse is brought to you by Old Spice. Smell ready for anything. We're back in Michigan here today in the final game of this regular season, this Big Ten matchup. The Terps take a 12-6 lead into the fourth, trying to go undefeated this conference play this season at 6-0. As we'll remind you, the NBA playoffs rolling on tomorrow afternoon. Pair of conference semifinal game ones on ABC and ESPN app. It is the Bucks and the Celtics followed up by the Grizzlies and the Warriors at 3.30 Eastern. We'll get it started with our countdown crew. Coverage at 12.30 Eastern, 9.30 a.m. Pacific on ABC and ESPN app, the NBA playoffs tomorrow afternoon. Mike Corey alongside five-time national champion, All-American and college coach Courtney Martinez-Connor here today from UM Lacrosse Stadium. And you feel like, Courtney, every time that Michigan's been able to get one back, couple in a row there in the third quarter, they had some momentum. At Maryland just continues to keep him at bay. It's their largest lead of the game here thus far at six. You know, it just shows their experience. They are a seasoned team, and the mistakes that we've seen Michigan have, again, closing out at the end of each of those little shot clocks have been all the difference, you know. Again, they're playing in the number one, or the number three team in the country, number one team currently in the Big Ten Conference, and that can be a little bit scary, but I think they've done a great job. The score is six to 12, it's doubled up, but, you know, if they just make a change of moving that ball quickly, exploiting the defense when it's spread out for Maryland, you know, this could be a very different game or having those extra couple little seconds, yeah. you know, ending a little bit sooner for each of those defensive plays because they've done a good job defensively. You know, even though Maryland has scored 12 goals, let it be known they have done their job for, you know, out of that shot clock, I'd say all but maybe one or two final right. seconds. Right, that's exactly right. I mean, when you're going to go and play a good 85, 86, 88 seconds of the shot clock, you got to finish it off. And you know, it's been damaging some of the late goals that have been scored by Maryland at the end of the shot clock and at the end of the quarters, like you've talked about, Courtney. So that adds to the six-goal lead that they have here today. Michigan, though, it's about you know getting some points on the board. I mean, their defense has been outstanding, but they haven't reached double digits in goals in any of their Big Ten games this season. The high was nine goals against Hopkins and Northwestern. And, you know, you just kind of knew coming in that they would have to achieve that mark here today to have a chance to compete and, and win this game against Maryland. And that's hard to do against the season team. Again, anyone point five to seven, that's just freshmen on the field. They have a lot of sophomores, three of them, who start and play a majority of the game. And while this season's not done yet, obviously they win this game. They could continue on to the Big Ten semifinal. Only four teams make it. However, you know, that's a bright spot for the future when you look ahead and say, wow, you know, we have a bunch of players who got experience this year. Watch out, you know, in 2023. Thompson. Nice cut in front. It's Smith Sterling and a huge save again. 
I mean, it looked like that even bounced off of the post there for a second. I, when you are looking at those opportunities that Michigan has had a great cut inside again, good things happen, and right there it just bounced off. You know, Maryland's getting the bounces, and there's sometimes nothing you can do about that, how the ball is coming off the turf, but good things happen, again, when they do their 1v1 dodges with a lot of space, or just when they send those cutters coming through. They've been open when it's been one right after the other. Maryland 14-0 this year and leading after three quarters of play. They've got the six-goal cushion. Eloise Clevenger, who has four goals today. It's a career high. She's had three goals on three different occasions. And that's going to be an offensive foul against Maryland. Call that a, a moving pick, blocking on those defensive players. You need to give defenders space in order to, to get around. Cannot do it blindly. So another opportunity for Michigan with the ball on the offensive end of the field. We see different players coming in and out. A lot of subs through the box, yeah. waiting for their personnel to get into place before they run their set offense. Almost four minutes gone by here in the fourth. It's Burke who has it for Michigan. Annabelle Burke. Swing it back to Thompson. Comes back, sails it over the top of the net. We get a whistle here on Maryland. Restart behind the net here with Caitlin Neer. Oh no. We back up top. The free position. Thompson. Instead, she misses wide to the right. Mears back there for the backup. Maryland defense doing a great job of collapsing on that eight meter taker, Kaylee Thompson. People think those are gimme goals, and they are not. No. People are crashing into your left and right defensively. Quick takeoffs, super important. Protecting that stick as well. The only time it feels like a gimme goal and because they, she's able to make it look like a gimme goal is Charlotte North. Oh. You just can't stop anything from her. My goodness. To wind up. The speed that she has. Doesn't even have to has. drive in. <laughs> just. Right, she's got the speed and the shot. She can also just go in, but I mean, it's it's amazing to watch. In the game I did earlier this year against Virginia Tech in which they won, she had seven goals on eight shots. Her accuracy is amazing. She can do it from a power shot. She can do it from in close with a lot of fakes. She's very, very versed at the offensive end of the field with changing up what she does. So any defensive team or goalkeeper, you know, they think they know what she's gonna do and she's like, watch this. I'll now beat four players before I take a shot on right. you. Accordingly. Defensively doing a great job. Catherine Galzerano, or as they call her Gals, on Aurora accordingly right there, making sure not to get tripped up at X behind the goal cage. We see man-to-man -man defense working a little bit better for Michigan. Well, getting free here and shooting space. Gooch. And that was one of those unfortunate, as she was running from one side of the eight meter to the other, caught inside of that shooting space area. She wasn't a stick length away from that Maryland attacker. And the ball got knocked out of the stick that time of Shannon Smith, and Michigan has it. Catherine Merrifield of Michigan, number 21, with that little stick check. Coming in off of the eight meter, great job. And again, it's that defense, the defense of Michigan translating into the offensive end. They keep giving opportunities for their attack. Again, there's that spark that they have, and it's just a matter of having that same energy on the offensive end that the defense is beginning, making sure that you translate and do your part on the field. And for attack, that's scoring goals. 
Well, and it's tough to get it by Sterling, who's got 10 goal, 10 saves today for Maryland in goal and her team defense. Not just her, this entire season, they give up an average of just 7.6 goals a game, Maryland does. That's third in the country in scoring defense. And they're winning their games by an average of 8.4 goals a game, which is just crazy right now. And they're less than eight minutes away from going to 15 and one on the season and a perfect 9-0 all-time against Michigan if they hold on to get this win. Their lowest goals output obviously coming against their matchup and only loss of the season versus James Madison. They only scored eight goals. Besides that, the, the next lowest totals were 13 and 14 goals versus Penn State and Ohio State. Maryland can put up numbers again. They are very dynamic in terms of their offense. They can work from behind the goal cage, dodge from up top, have cutters inside. You know, once you think you shut down one player, there's another one stepping up. Well, you said it. I mean, those are the three games right there. The eight goals against James Madison and the loss, then 13, 14 in wins, and then everything's been 15 or higher. They've scored 15 or more goals in every other game. All wins, of course, this season for the Terps. Right, and high wins. 19, 19, 18 goals scored, even 20 goals scored. That's that's an offensive powerhouse right there where they are able to just work together and have it translate into quality offense. Well, they've defeated every conference opponent this season as they're 5-0 by at least six goals. Just fouls on Michigan right there. So eight meter awarded to Aurora accordingly as she split that double. Foul called against Michigan. And another. Too soon. Another one. Second time we've seen that from Aurora accordingly. Referees all over any early starts. We've seen it happen on both sides for both Michigan as well as Maryland, even from the defensive side as well. Oh, cutting through and scoring on the shot. Caitlin Mead. Outstanding for Michigan. Excellent transition and the response there as it's now 12 to 7. Coming from the defensive end of the field, once again, building into their offense, Michigan was able to capitalize on playing with Caitlin Meir behind the goal cage, really making sure to set up that offense. Caitlin Mead in transition making the score a little bit closer. 12-7, Maryland still in the lead. All right, let's take a look at who is ready for anything today, brought to you by Old Spice. What do we got? Eloise Clevenger has done an outstanding job on the offensive end of the field. Generally, she's doing hustle plays. She's causing turnovers in her ride. But right now, it's her time to shine. She is scoring goals, four to be exact. She has four goals, one assist on the day. That's her career high. And she is capitalizing when any opportunity is faced in front of her. She sees that open lane, she is taking it in. And that's just on six shots for the day. Excellent job for her today and the career high. And it's 12-7. Maryland leads it by five and they win the draw control here. Overall today, 13 to 10 in favor of the Wolverines. Be the outright Big Ten title for Maryland again, six time in seven years. They win here today. Michigan again trying to play for that final fourth spot in the upcoming Big Ten Conference Tournament. They need a win to be in the top four. If not, based on the tiebreakers, they are out. There's under six minutes to play here to get those five goals back at least.
Harvard and Yale men's lacrosse right now, starting on the ESPN app. That's our game at the top of the hour here at 2 o'clock Eastern time. We'll get you to that game here on the U as soon as we are done with this one here at Michigan. 5.15 and ticking left in the fourth quarter lead. I mean, they have they have no hurry, right? I mean, with the, with the time and the, and the shot clock, Courtney, I mean, you can just kind of wind this down, even to get it one back, another possession or two. Instead, they pass it in front. They're going to get a goal for good measure. Grace Griffin scores for Maryland. Off a feed from none other than Eloise Clevenger. We saw Michigan, as soon as Eloise got the ball, all eyes were on her. They sent a quick slide to her, which opened up Grace Griffin inside. As the ball moves around the perimeter right here, Eloise challenging. We see those two defenders sliding to the ball carrier right here. Eloise Clevenger, her eyes are up. 3-15 and 15 for Michigan. Went to the ball that left a Griffin right inside. Grace Griffin with her 20th goal on the season. It almost looks too easy for them. That was just a little bit of a miscommunication there defensively. And that's an under-the-radar type of player, Grace Griffin, that Coach Reese told us about this week in our discussion with her. She had two goals and two assists in the last game. And just gets a good one for extra measure here with a 13 to seven advantage now with over five minutes to play in the game. Kaylee Thompson racing in in a hurry, but like many times today, Maryland's defense and Brianna Lamaro that time able to shut her off and force her back out to reset. A lot of space being created to the right-hand side. Thompson saves Sterling. Maryland's got it. It seemed like a little bit of a an easy shot to be taken right there. Possession key, but that makes now 11 saves. 11 saves for Emily Sterling in goal for Maryland. She's done an outstanding job, as we referenced, not just in this game, but throughout the whole season. There's a reason why she's ranked number three in terms of goals against average. She has a great defense in front of her that force low angle, low quality shots that makes her job a, a bit easier. Accordingly, off the pick. Maryland just needs to use up some time here with a six goal advantage. They're gonna run their record to 15 and one and six and oh in the Big Ten. Final game of the regular season here today. Senior day for Michigan. Lubecker. 20 to shoot. She's still working hard and it's going to draw the foul. Michigan sideline and coaching staff not happy with that call, you know, I, I think the matchups that we've seen on the defensive end by Michigan, that they've done their job. They're making other players step up. They've been really tight on Hannah Lubecker all game, as well as Aurora accordingly. But we've seen players like Eloise Clevenger step yeah. into those roles. So if they're not touching the ball as much, other players are making sure to step up and do the scoring for Maryland in their absence. A nice save from Wiseman for Michigan. He's been outstanding this season. Third best in the nation. Goals against average and saves percentage. I mean, you think about it, you know, you had just mentioned the numbers and how much Maryland's been able to put up this year. This is actually tied for their Second lowest scoring output of the season as Michigan scores with Kelly Poole. She puts it in. That's her third goal of the season and her ninth game of the year. So they transitioned from the defensive end, slowed things down just a little bit right before they got into their slow break. Slow break. Getting the ball to X right into the hands of Caitlin Meir. Their quarterback on the offensive end of the field. And then Kelly Poole with that trail cut coming in transition again, running a slow break picture perfect 
for Michigan, closing the gap. Now eight goals for Michigan. Still have quite a ways to go in these final two minutes, 30 seconds. We talk about how quick goals can happen. Lacrosse is a game of runs, so it is not done yet. Two minutes, 34 seconds left to go to get this game back on track for Michigan. Maryland's only given up double digit goals three times this entire season. And this is exactly what Michigan needs. And with the draw control, Caitlin Mead can move quickly here. Trail check, and the ball is now pushed down the field and into the stick of Maryland. And the Terps have it with two minutes and 15 seconds remaining and a five goal lead. Now that's almost going to be a lot of the shot clock. One more possession potentially in Michigan's hands. This is the potential end of their season. So I would expect for them to step out right. and want to cause a turnover for Maryland. They obviously have the ability. We've seen them step up and cause a turnover throughout the entire game. The defense is capable of that. But right now, not everybody is out. Timeout taken by Maryland. One minute 38 to go Timeout. in the contest. Maryland. When we talked about some of the great players that we've seen throughout this season, we're looking forward to the women's tournament coming up on the ESPN Networks. We'll have all 28 games for you, the championship on ESPN, Homewood Field in Baltimore, and how about some of the greats that we'll be watching when this tournament gets underway. These are the five players in the front running positions for the Tawaratan, all from the top five teams in the nation right now. All right, we see Aurora accordingly. This game, as well as the previous game versus Northwestern, being quote unquote quiet and that she's not having five, six, seven point games. She does a great job obviously playing for the number three team in the country, but I think this award is going to Jamie Ortega. And I'm just making a prediction here that UNC is going to win it all. They are just outstanding, have been rolling through teams, have a lot of transfers who have seamlessly plugged into their team. And Jamie Ortega, fifth year, she is just outstanding on the field goals assist riding getting the ball back she does it all and as an attacker the the Tawartan has gone to somebody who can do it all and I just see that in a player like Jamie Ortega there's got to be some uh, tiebreaker if you will because all those uh, numbers They're are amazing. pretty even all of them. yeah all five would be deserving of it you're right so how do those teams finish up uh, we'll have to see big thanks uh, to members of our crew here today our producer Todd Jones DJ our director Sean McCluskey along with Joe Nicola and Andy Brill. Thanks to audio with James Shugard and Mason Haddad, who's been awesome with us up here uh, in the booth today, just getting us set up in every which way. So thank you very much. Mike Freer on stats with Nick Smeagol as well. Now, among many others here today from Michigan at UM Lacrosse Stadium. Thanks everyone as the Terps with a minute and a half to go. And just moving the ball around here at this point. This is Lubecker. Now for Smith. Trying to play keep away. But the goal is open, and Smith. Oh, is coming back to make the play is Wiseman. How about that? Ariel Wiseman. Somehow for Michigan stops what would have been looked like an easy goal for Maryland. How about that? <laughs> that was, in my opinion, one of the plays of the game. Ariel Wiseman. Fifth year goalkeeper here, Michigan. We see her stepping up, streaking in. She was matching up on a defense or offensive player outside of the screen right there <laughs> and came flying in to make that save. Tremendous, never giving up. Well, Sterling again back the other way from Maryland and uh, kind of indicative of what we've seen from them today throughout on both ends of the field, offensively, defensively. That's her 12th save today. Wiseman's got six saves. And just 20 seconds remaining in this one here today. How about the Terps as uh, we look forward uh, to the tournament, what you saw out of them today? You know, I think they handled 
everything with poise on both ends of the field. But I'm going to say Emily Sterling was a game changer. There's a reason why she has won the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week four times. She is just outstanding and really sparks that defense. That's a final. Maryland 13 and Michigan 8, the Terrapins. The Big Ten regular season champions, their sixth outright title in the last seven years, and they win it by five here today on Senior Day at Michigan. They're now 15 and one on the season and a perfect 6-0 in the Big Ten this year. That's gonna do it for us. Thanks for watching. Terps win it by five. Eloise Clevenger with a career high, four goals in the win. For Courtney martinez Connor, I'm Mike Corey. Thanks for watching. We're going to send you out now for men's lacrosse. It's Harvard and Yale. Enjoy that one.